good evening students uh, lakshmi sir will join within 5 minutes please revise yesterday's class okay
Yeah, good evening. Good evening, sir. 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 Yeah, good evening. So, uh, Shaida, can you give me host status? Yes, thank you. Host, please. Yes, sir. Yeah. Is it visible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. So we are discussing the biotechnology in the fastest possible mode. I will try to finish today because since the commencement of biotechnology, one or the other. Obstacle is going on, and hence we are unable to finish this. See here, along with Boyer, is Stanley Cohen, who is from Stanford University, a Stanford scientist, studied the small ringlets of DNA called plasmids. Then you know what is plasmid, and they are freely, you know, floating circular DNA molecules in the cytoplasm of not all bacteria cells, but certain bacterial cells. That means the plasmids are not present in all, but certain. They are, you know, floating freely in the cytoplasm. Because the nomenclature of CBSE is important, and hence, you know, I am highlighting these things. I am repeating a number of times so that you should not commit any mistake or blunder in the examination. So, what about the, you know, characteristic feature of this? Yeah, any problem? Okay, so here the plasmids, which are uh, you know freely floating in the cytoplasm of some of the bacterial cells, they can replicate independently. That is what you should remember. Is it visible now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. See here. So they can replicate. That is what is important point. They are, you know, floating freely. Certain, these are the keywords. 
you know they are ringlets of dna what is this ringlets of dna ringlets means small circular dna molecules double stranded or single stranded double stranded double stranded yeah here dna is double stranded dna so in the process of evolution we discussed that the dna combined with some of the uh, you know histone proteins and non histone proteins and thereby you know the chromosome evolved over a period of time and some of the dna molecules were as it is freely floating in the cytoplasm and some of the you know dna molecules combined with the histone and non histone proteins and forms into chromosome so this is the uh, bacterial dna and here in this bacterial dna this is the chromosome this is the chromosome combined with the histone and non histone proteins and these are the ringlets of dna which are present don't draw anything please right then this particular dna they it can replicate on its own independently and here what is this coding strand of dna this coding strand of dna is here this is the chromosome and apart from this this can replicate really see so these are the points you need to remember here in the uh, you know class mate who is the hero who worked on this stanley cohen that is what the point is. so no, we need we need to highlight this stanley cohen who is uh, stanford university scientist who worked on this plasmids what cohen did what is the greatness of the cohen great greatness of the cohen was he developed a yes please yeah greatness of the cohen cohen so had studied plasmid no 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 here a method of removing these plasmids from the cells and then reinserting them into other cells that is what he did see this is what is this is what is back to the here is chromosome and here is plasmid yes it is not so easy to remove plasmid from this bacteria and again what we discussed in you know this technology in the technology we discussed that, in the technology we discussed that you can introduce this plasmid into the bacterial culture into the bacteria so how to introduce this plasmid how to remove this one and how to introduce into the bacterial culture this is what is the real issue and problem so what is the greatness of the cohen why we are discussing about this particular stanley cohen who is a stanford scientist okay stanley stanford scientist you remember ss how to remove this plasmid from the bacteria then how to insert into the cell so he developed a method of uh yeah please don't operate on this please don't operate on this right listen to this carefully this stanley cohen developed a method of removing these plasmids from the cell then reinserting them into the other cells other bacterial cells we discussed this is the bacterial culture in the test tube this is what the greatness of stanley cohen so what are the key words or key points you need to remember under stanley cohen yes please what are the key words Plasmids. Inserting 
then this you know how to then remove and how to instead of removing plasmids yeah what are the what are the characteristic features of these uh, uh, plasmids they are small they are small ringlets of dna float, float inside of plasmid yeah float inside freely in the some of the bacterial cells then what is the other character they can replicate independently without depending upon this chromosome then and what we discussed the plasmid can enter into any cell these are the characteristic features of the plasmids then and this you know herbert boyer what are the two points you need to remember under herbert boyer herbert boyer yeah herbert boyer born in 1936 so that means here if there is any question when the biotechnology developed as a subject and if you answer 1930s 1940s means because the master who is responsible for born in 1936 and hence at least after 35 years he might have worked so around 1970s the biotechnology came into existence this must be your assessment and hence this year was also highlighted so born in 1936 then you know western pennsylvania he belong to her western pennsylvania then studied in pittsburgh and yale university then worked in california university at san francisco so that person stanford this person california university california university is there in san francisco okay then this person worked on couple of restriction enzymes of e coli bacteria so we discussed that bacteria to prevent infection from the virus developed the restriction enzymes by cutting the viral dna and also by other means but here this person you know worked on this restriction enzymes produced by the e coli escherichia coli bacteria okay then what he observed in this who is this person yes who is this person what is the name of the person herbert boyer who worked on who worked on restriction enzymes this person worked on restriction enzymes boyer then here he observed the capability of restriction enzyme what capability it can cut the dna in a particular <laughs> and here it will left to the sticky ends on this strands what is sticky end we will see so that means here the capability of restriction enzyme is cutting then thereby sticky ends will be produced then he also observed that the clipped ends can be linked together suppose if two dna strands are there cut by this restriction enzyme and you can link these because of the presence of the sticky ends so what is the greatness of this whatever we discussed in the entire uh, biotechnology without this restriction enzymes it is possible to have possible to have this uh, biotechnology as a subject so here this restriction enzyme will cut the dna at a specific points they are site specific they will cut only at that particular point that is so that is known to us so who is this mamta shone par yeah 
See, here there are two great people, and one person, one person, you know, the Herbert Boyer, who worked on this restriction enzyme, and this restriction enzyme will cut them. Another person, you know, the plasmid. which is very very important which is nothing but the vector molecule vector molecule so if you see the tools of the biotechnology one tool that is what is the restriction enzyme identified its nature was identified by this herbert boyer and another tool that is the plasmid which is also vector identified its nature was identified by stanley cohen so both this stanley cohen you know this herbert boyer were responsible for the recombining of the dna from two different sources to manufacture of the different proteins different uh, maybe in the form of hormone maybe in the form of enzyme so this is what we discussed even in yesterday's class so we discussed that we discussed that so this is our uh you know human genome and uh, from the human genome we will take out we will take out one important gene of interest it may be insulin producing gene it may be growth hormone gene it may be some other gene you know factor 8 gene factor 9 gene so deficiency of factor 8 leads to what what this is deficiency of factor 8 deficiency of factor 9 leads to dash and dash thalassemia ah uh, factor 8 and factor 9 what is it ah sir hemophilia ah uh, hemophilia but what you told thalassemia sorry sir What is thalassemia then? Thalassemia is in relation to what disease? Here is hemophilia A and hemophilia B, and here factor eight deficiency leads to hemophilia A, and factor nine deficiency leads to hemophilia B. Thalassemia is in relation to hemoglobin, and hemoglobin we discussed that alpha chains are present and beta chains are present in the hemoglobin molecule so two alpha chains and two beta chains and we discussed that the alpha chains are produced by the genes locating on 16 and beta chains produced by the genes locating on 11th chromosome and we also discussed that the rate of synthesis of alpha chains and beta chains may be different in the production of the hemoglobin molecule and that this is the rate of production varies and thereby one disease is seen that is what is thalassemia if there is any problem you know here in the alpha production which is less than alpha thalassemia if beta chains are less beta thalassemia and this is what we discussed and if there is any problem in the 11th chromosome and one more disease is there that is what is sickle cell anemia okay sixth amino acid will be present these are all the different diseases we discussed right then we need to remember Uh, you know another important scientist apart from this stanley cohen and herbert boyer rene descartes and this rene descartes see here this rene descartes was a french philosopher mathematician and a biologist of 17th century see how many subject he studied he is a philosopher mathematician and a biologist of 17th century not the present century see here he told that rene descartes told that human knowledge especially natural sciences were directed to develop technologies provide the comforts and value to human life see see whatever the knowledge you are getting 
were in the natural sciences and these knowledge this knowledge will lead to a technology and this technology will provide a comfort not only comfort and also value to the human life so in this connection the physics and the chemistry gave rise to the engineering technologies and a number of industries came into existence and thereby we are enjoying the comfort okay so if there is no physics if there is no chemistry number of you know our articles items are not present maybe cars maybe aeroplanes maybe helicopters this is uh, you know the knowledge gained in physics chemistry then the knowledge gained in biology you know will serve as a source of food and similarly if you start doing some sort of technology and this uh, you know if you start doing some sort of technology with the biological materials that lead to biotechnology and here the 20th century offshoot of modern biology is nothing but biotechnology here straight away our quality of life change change in our daily life as its products brought qualitative improvement in health and food production we will see in due course of time how this biotechnology is helpful what about its applications and which are essential in bringing the qualitative improvement in the uh, uh, health and food production okay because this biotechnology is helpful not only in health suppose say for example if you if you are having any deficiency of insulin hormone if you start producing this insulin though it is not present normally it will give some relief and here you are not having factor 8 for example and if you if the industry is producing by using this technology so factor 8 can be produced and hemophilia can be controlled hemophilia a can be controlled factor 8 then factor 9 factor 9 can be produced and hemophilia b can be controlled then here you can produce growth hormone so the dwarfism can be controlled see like this in the health industry so all these things are there suppose if you are having any deficiency you know of particular deficiency of one enzyme and as a result of this then there will be a disease suppose say for example you are having a phenyl ketonuria phenyl ketonuria which is because of deficiency of one particular enzyme and if you produce that enzyme then you know if you uh, give that to the patient then automatically your disease will be cured so it gives a lot of comfort so that is how the qualitative improvement is present qualitative improvement is present where in the health food production then in the food production even you know, several in agriculture in animal husbandry in both the recombinant dna technology is helpful that is how our fruit production will change so who is the person who, who you know who identified these things so the knowledge gained in the uh, natural sciences will be helpful maybe physics maybe chemistry maybe biology uh, okay and so that the technology if it is there in the physics and chemistry then industries number of industries came then bio biology technology biotechnology then in 20th century this is the offshoot so initially the french philosopher gave this you know uh, orientation so his name is important and try to remember his name rene descartes he has given this orientation that is what happened after you know 2 3 centuries later right so who are these three people to whom we have to remember to answer the questions in the biotechnology so one is this french philosopher and mathematician and biologist of 17th century not in the present century not in the last century 17th century who gave some orientation on the technology related to the natural sciences and which gives lot of comfort then this herbert boyer herbert boyer and this uh, you know who worked on this restriction enzymes and uh, uh, this person stanley cohen who worked on this oh. along boyer who worked on this plasmids and this plasmids then restriction enzymes are very very important in biotechnology 
is it clear yes, yes sir yeah try to take the screenshots of these things to you know for your revision is it visible properly sir yes, sir please send yes. this chart in group ha ah, ah, ah. sare group mein bhej dijiye okay you ask shaida to do this shaida okay sir hmm is it visible yes sir yes sir yeah see if you see the uh, traditional view modern view and the definition given by efp european federation of biotechnology then here in this entire chapter these are the things which are there so so far we discussed uh you know the people connected with uh, this biotechnology so who are these people stanley cohen then von boyer then who is the other person rene descartes descartes so here uh, you know these people they are connected with stanley cohen worked on the plasmids along with the von boyer von boyer specially worked on restriction enzymes and these are the two important uh, tools of uh, biotechnology so plasmids and the restriction enzymes here so apart from that what is the traditional view of biotechnology and what about the modern view of biotechnology and what about the definition given by this european federation of biotechnology okay apart from these things we need to see the specific points under tools of recombinant dna technology then we need to identify the different tools which are there then apart from that the principles you know the processes of biotechnology then applications of biotechnology so these are the things related to this so one by one we will see and if you see the traditional view traditional view what about the traditional view though the name of biotechnology may be new but we are using the biotechnology because bio, what is biotechnology if you use the microorganism anywhere 
that means you are using the biological organism and if that process is through you know micro mediated process then we can say that that is what is biotechnology and in the manufacturing of the curd in the manufacturing of the bread in the manufacturing of the wine we are using you know different varieties of microbes and here we are saying that the micro uh, this bacteria uh, this biotechnology is of recent origin but since beginning since mesolithic times so we are using these products we are also using these products okay that means the biotechnology was there so in the traditional view it deals with what deals with the techniques of using live organisms not only organisms maybe enzymes from these organisms so that means here entire live organism may be used or the enzyme which is present in the uh, which is produced from the organism you know may be used in producing the different products curd is a product bread is a product wine is a product so without microorganisms or the enzymes from these microorganisms these products cannot be produced and all these mediated micro mediated process comes under this uh, biotechnology are who is using these things please ha huh? don't touch the screen please hmm right is it clear so what you should remember under traditional view in relation to this traditional view this deals with the techniques of using either live organisms or enzymes from these live organisms for what purpose to produce the products okay and these products are helpful to the human being all this micro mediated process comes under this category and here manufacturing of these things are examples then what about modern view and if you see the modern view if you see the modern view the modern view now we are used in the most restricted sense restricted sense not all biotechnology means not production of the curd not production of the bread not production of the wine we are used in the restriction sense so to refer to those processes which use genetically modified organisms don't touch the screen and don't test my patience right yeah refer to those process which use genetically modified organisms you know for production on a larger scale who is doing this what nonsense is going on it is very easy to identify who is doing this then you can see the music use this fellow see the genetically modified organisms can be used in this not normal organisms so the the organism 
what we discussed here from this particular uh, human genome human genome there is useful gene there is useful gene desired dna and this can be taken out and this will be your desired dna and you can add you know this desired dna uh, you know to this plasmid and on this the restriction enzyme will act then here these two can be combined with the help of ligase then the recombinant dna can be produced and that recombinant dna can be inserted into this bacteria now this bacteria is what is called as it is a genetically modified bacteria it is not normal bacteria now so that bacteria will be used and what is the purpose of this bacteria and what this gene will do now this desired dna taken out from this human source which will produce maybe insulin maybe growth hormone maybe some other factor 8 to factor 9 etc etc so you know how much quantity it will produce large scale that is what the purpose of this one larger scale so here this can be produced in the larger scale the genetically modified organisms are used to produce large scale products not small scale then not only this genetically modified organisms for the production on a large scale other techniques are used in biotechnology are apart from this in vitro fertilization leading to a test tube baby and here in vitro fertilization ivf to produce uh, the test tube baby not only that you can synthesize a gene and you can use that and not only that you can produce a vaccine and you can correct a defective gene with the gene therapy so these are the different you know applications which are present so here we discussed how to produce in vivo you know cell based production or maybe in vitro pcr method in vitro cloning either in vitro or in vivo can be produced to produce different products on a large scale yeah see you please uh, unmute your cameras i am requesting all to unmute your cameras unmute please yes sir unmute your cameras good oh, evening yes sir good evening कैमरा स्पेस अनम्यूट योर कैमरास आई डोंट गिव परमिशन सो Who is this Huda Hak? Sir, I think he is Naman. Who is doing this? Yes, sir. Who is this Naman? Sir, he is. I don't know, sir. नमन नमन कैन यू अनम्यूट यूर कैमेरा यस प्लीज 
Who is this Horahak? Horahak? Yes, sir. Yeah, any problem? Horahak, who is this? Can you unmute your camera? I'm requesting all to unmute your cameras, please. If you don't unmute, then you will be deleted from the class. And don't waste your time and my time. Yes, please. So join with your original names and don't, you know, use the uh, pet names, please. Sorry, with your name. Yes. And don't disturb the class and don't disturb yourself, please. So from tomorrow onwards, you should open your camera and you should sit in the class and you should join with your own names, not with pet names. In chemistry class, also someone also doing this. In chemistry class, even. Yes, sir. A uh, few days ago, someone is yes, getting uh, IDs and then he, he is opening uh, this camera and my auto then disturbed the class. Okay. Who is Kunal? Yes, yes sir. Pavan. Shabana? Yes, sir. Shabana is I am unable to see Shabana. No, sir. Okay. Pavan? Yes, sir. Shalini? Yes, sir. Pavan? Prakashi? Kushi? Swati? Who is this nature look? Sir, I am from Guntur. Babu, you please open with uh, uh, your name. Sir, I don't know how to log in. You learn how to know, you know, log in. You contact Mr. Saida. Okay. Right. Abhidev. See, don't disturb the classes and don't think that we will not keep quiet because we will report to the you know concerned principals and we will write a letter you know to the cbsc even okay apart from police case and you will not fit for any examination in the country don't waste time right
see here we discussed that in the entire biotechnology you know we are producing by using the different genetically modified organisms like this and we will produce different products which are essential in treating and in preventing number of diseases this is one area so by using genetically modified organisms and to produce the different products that means the number of products are there which are used in medicine to treat the diseases and here not only that if there is any reproductive problem and we discuss the reproductive structure and fertilization occurs in the fallopian tube there is a problem in the fallopian tube so fertilization you can conduct the fertilization outside in the test tube so that and here the fertilized zygote will be produced and zygote will become morula and morula will become blastula blastula will become gastula and blast you know this blastula stage can be you know inserted into the woman that is what is test tube baby as the fertilization is going on in the test tube and hence this fertilization is what is called as in vitro fertilization and this in vitro fertilization leading to the test tube sir you are not audible sir you are not you are not audible yeah how to another one is how to synthesize a gene how to synthesize a gene what we discussed under you know central dogma of genetics we discussed the central dogma of genetics while discussing the term one syllabus what about central dogma of genetics anyone sir dna uh, dna transcribe yeah here dna the information present in the dna can be transcribed on to the mrna MR. molecule translated into protein proteins by translation operate this dna is nothing but the gene so gene is responsible for this mrna and this is transcription and this is translation and you can reverse this and if you know the protein structure which is very easy to know the amino acid sequence and based on that you can construct this mrna and based on this complementary base pairing mechanism then you can construct this you can form this you can synthesize this dna segment this dna is nothing but the cdna the complementary dna and you can synthesize a gene like this and you can use this and here dna vaccine can be produced by using this particular method by using the dna technology so vaccine is helpful in the prevention of the disease and this is helpful in the treatment of the disease so if there is any short note question on discuss the different recombinant uh, uh, dna technology products which are helpful in medicine so you can mention some of the products here in the treatment and some of the things here in the treatment and this is also treatment if there is any problem here in the gene then you can correct that through this gene therapy therapy this is also important in the treatment of the diseases like this so all these things comes under this uh, modern view then are able to follow what is the application of this dna technology based on this yes sir modern view what is the application tell me now you can apply this dna technology in production of number of products what are those products what are those products you can produce a protein on the large scale large scale it may be enzyme it may be hormone it may be antigen it may be antibody antibody and it may be other proteins even structural proteins 
so all these things are helpful in the treatment of the disease then this in vitro fertilization test tube baby to correct the reproductive deficiencies and this construction of the new gene that is what is new gene synthesis haragovind corona then you can use it as a probe dna probes in dna fingerprinting technology we discuss dna probes and you can produce a vaccine which is important in the prevention of the disease and here you can correct through the gene therapy these are the different applications give me a second is it clear yes sir yes sir yeah in the entire application in our discussion then we will concentrate on the same so try to have this broader perspective so now you see the definition given by this european federation of biotechnology okay efb <coughs> efb definition european federation of biotechnology so what they have given the integration of natural science the integration of natural science and organisms cells parts thereof then molecular analogs for products and services so this is the definition and here in the definition they have highlighted the european federation of biotechnology highlighted that there is an integration and in this integration in this integration natural science and organisms so natural science can be integrated with either organisms or cells or part of the cells not the entire cell or molecular analogs different molecules for what purpose for two purposes number one is production products number two service what is the product and what is the service just now we discussed we discussed that the protein can be produced this is product and the protein may be hormone the protein may be antigen the protein may be antibody the protein may be structural protein enzyme these are all the different products then what are the services if you are having any reproductive issue and problem not producing children and your fallopian tube is having some problem then you can go for test tube baby it is a service okay then you are having a gene problem the gene therapy is a service so here then you may produce you know a vaccine dna vaccine see there are certain services and there are certain products that can be produced when these products can be produced and service can be given you have to integrate these things what to integrate so there is an integration in this biotechnology there is an integration of the natural science with organisms or cells there are or cells or parts of the cells or molecular analogs so for the production of products and for giving service this is what the definition given by european federation of biotechnology is it clear yes sir yes sir yes sir yes sir 
so there is integration of this natural science with any one of this if you combine your science knowledge with this one this one this one this one your product can be produced or service can be given that is what is you know the biotechnology then what are the tools of biotechnology this is process of biotechnology tools of recombinant dna technology <clears throat> okay in tomorrow session we will try to see the rest of the things and tomorrow i will also conduct one test okay sir okay sir okay okay tomorrow i am requesting all the students you know uh, to prepare for one test and you have to unmute your cameras and mute your mics that's it so thank you okay we'll sir we'll meet tomorrow good evening sir yeah this is thank you sir thank you sir